Is that oh, there oh, there he is right now. Jared Leto. Oh, Jared Leto. Holy yes. There he is. Wow. Hi, welcome. Good to see Have you, bud. Good to see you again. It's been a while. Hold on. Grab a mic. I'm gonna, I was about to play I'm a 30 here. Seconds to Mars song, but let's I'm go ahead and talk well. to you instead. How yeah, you doing? Why not? How you doing? Uh, thanks for being here. Well, thank you for having me. If I you, appreciate it. If you were not in K-Rock right now, would you be sleeping still, or are you up usually at this time? No, I'm usually up by now, and it's it's a it's a really busy beautiful time but a busy time as well because we just put the song out about um two days ago we've got it here we're gonna play it in a second first we've got uh some classic 30 seconds tomorrow if you don't mind me saying it's crazy to think uh this band has been around now and i only know this because my first gig ever in radio i was interning at a station in back in dc and it was when 30 seconds tomorrow was promoting their first album wow ever. look and at that jared leto circle. came by and it was the first time ever so now you guys are coming up on Almost three decades as a band. Yeah, it's insane. And in your DC 101? That was at uh, HFS. A HFS. Okay, yeah. so HFS was one of the stations. I think it was classic rock when I was a kid. Um, but it was one of the stations that changed our lives. Yeah. yeah we, we learned about music listening to that station. And we were living in DC at that time. It was it was the 80s. Yeah. And, uh, uh, Mary and Barry was the mayor. Yeah, he was doing blow there. and everything. Yeah, he Remember was that? smoking crack. Oh, crack. That's right. He was doing crack. Hookers and crack. Man, that was good old times. That's yeah. what radio ran on back then. Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> what a mayor. What <laughs> mayor. What politics <laughs> ran on right there. But it uh, was a wild time. Anyway, that that was a, a great time for music and a great time to learn about music, too. Uh, it was so crazy to think because as we were talking earlier this week, you know, bands announcing they're breaking up. Some 41 calling it quits after 27 years. Panic and then we the heard disco. Panic at the Disco Daft calling punk. it quits. Was there moments at all like because you know you've obviously kept very busy and you guys do you know you've done it right i think like you waited five six years i think since the last album came out was there moments within any time where you said maybe we're going to call quits as a band you know the band is my brother and i so if we did that we'd have big problems <laughs> yeah. but it happened know. with oasis i mean you know, that, those yeah, are brothers I, did. I mean we we fortunately have a really good relationship and you know it hasn't always been easy but I don't think we would be 30 seconds to Mars if we weren't brothers. And I don't think our relationship as brothers would be the same if we didn't have 30 seconds to Mars. So um, it's a real labor of love for us. Uh, so actually breaking up the band is probably not a... Couldn't even happen. It's impossible. I don't think it's, gonna, yeah, it's impossible. Thanksgiving yeah. would be really awkward. Yeah, it would be, yeah, <laughs> it would be very strange. We might stop you know touring or i think it's it's good to take breaks too well yeah you took a five-year yeah. break right between yeah. albums yeah. so when did the album when when did writing the new album begin was it, it is was it a long into process COVID. Oh. and you know when that hit obviously it was so challenging for so many people around the world but for my brother and i it was a beautiful thing it was the first time we had solid ground under our feet maybe in our entire lives because we moved around so much as kids um, but it was there was something beautiful about being in one place, and we I remember I, I I called him up and we were talking. I said, let's just get started, and so we wrote a couple hundred songs during that time, and uh, it was a really productive time and and a, and a great time for both of us. So there's over nine, there's like eighty five songs you wrote that no one will ever hear because yeah, you whittled the it garbage. down. They go right in the garbage. Yeah. Right, it's right, always right. fascinating to yeah, me. Just, and you don't even hold on. We were just talking. Who were we talking about? Oh, Danny Elfman. We had yeah. Danny Elfman on this week. He said uh, he writes all sorts of stuff. He, goes, he said right, he wrote all of Beetlejuice yeah, before, go, seeing, before looking at the movie. Yeah, and right he the threw trash. the whole thing in the trash. He couldn't even find it if he wanted to. And I go, you could keep it in the cloud somewhere, but you don't even keep it. You chuck wow. it? No, no, no. I chuck it. And there, you know, you make voice notes. They're just too many. You can never go through them. I have audio cassette tapes, like boxes of them from back in the day, uh, filled with songs that'll never, you know, they probably don't even work anymore. They couldn't even be played. I can't wait, though. We're going to listen to Stuck together and find out the story behind Stuck. I do want to give people this, though, just uh, because this is uh, this is obviously one of the big ones. And then uh, Stuck is the newest, of course. We will play that for you in a moment. Uh, this, of course, is The Kill. Jared Leto's in our studio. We're going to hang out and a lot of people on the phone, a lot of questions. We'll get to all of that. More Jared Leto after this on K-Rock. Because I always wonder, Jared Leto, by the way, is with us right now at K-Rock. Uh, when you hear that, and I've heard you've played performed that song a million times, heard it a million times, do you think to yourself, I could have done something differently, or do you think that's like the perfect Perfect song. Never ever think it's a perfect song. Could have been fixed. Uh, yeah, that's why I can't listen to my own music. You know, really? once it's done, you just gotta let it go. I mean, Is it the same with movies and music? You can't watch or you know, listen to movies, yourself. You know, with movies, it's that weird thing you hear actors say from time to time. Um, I don't watch my films. So and you've never seen them? No, I've seen a couple. I saw Requiem for Dream at Cannes. 
It's Darren Aronofsky film. was like, you're, you're going to see this movie. Yeah, yeah that's a must watch the, even for you. <laughs> yeah, it was, I was glad that I did it. Um, so I've seen a couple of the earlier ones. But, uh, Man, imagine if you read a script, you're like, this looks great, but I don't want to be in it because I want to see it. Yeah, like, I'm afraid if I'm I'll in never it, I'll know never what know. It would happen. I right. thought I could watch Blade Runner because I'm in it so little. Yeah, you know, they called me up very late in the game, and, and they, you know, there was like, hey, there's this part. Can you? What do you think about this? I was absolutely Blade Runner is one of my favorite ever. But, of course. But anyway, with the music, you know, you play it on stage night after night, so you have a chance to be with it. And uh, but now with the kill, I mean, it's 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 uh, it is what it is. I, I, mean, I wouldn't change a thing because. It affected people in a certain way, and uh, and a, and a, something about it worked. Yeah, I did hear an artist the other day. I forgot who it was. Someone was saying they heard their song and they forgot it was themselves. <laughs> they forgot it was their own song. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great song. This we should do like this. like the Smashing Pumpkins. Oh wait, that's me. We should cover it. Uh, well, I mean, it's been a while, obviously, since you've had a new album, and yeah. now you're going to get back on stage. You're performing at Austin City Limits right later this year, and I mean, yeah. what a killer lineup! You got Foo Fighters, Kendrick Lamar. Are you somebody who? You have that many artists in one place, you're going to maybe put that cat costume on and get back in the audience so you can watch some of these other performances? You know, it would be a lot of fun to be out there watching people. With festivals, usually you're you're running around and, and you kind of... I usually get there right before we go on because yeah. uh, you're just so busy. But once in a while, you know, you'll have a day off or you'll be somewhere that's close to a great festival with a great lineup and, you know, you have a chance to go be a fan. Uh, and it's great. You run off to the side of the stage. Maybe you go out in the audience. Uh, you can't wear the cat costume, though, because the thing is, you know, you're a famous guy, obviously. Jared Leto, very famous. The cat may be more famous just because of how much attention that got. This was your costume at the Met Gala a week ago. It was the buzziest costume yet again. Like, you've won. I don't know if you feel the pressure now to outdo yourself, because a few years ago, it was you holding your own head, and that became the most talked about thing. And this year, you wear the giant cat costume, and immediately, that's the top trend. Like, that's the thing. Even Doja Cat, who was dressed like a cat, uh, no offense. You outcatted her. You outcatted her. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You know, the thing about uh, the cat that I loved, there were two things, is I thought that Carl would be looking down, smiling mm -hmm. and laughing, Carl Lagerfeld. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Met was a tribute to Carl Lagerfeld. And some people don't know this, but he was he had a famous cat. His cat was named Choupette. Didn't uh, he leave a big inheritance to his cat? Yeah, his cat is like... The pet. richest person yeah. in the world. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It, it, he's, he's balling. Um... But uh, but Choupette is, uh, uh, they call him Shushu. Uh, but no, you know what? I, I, the other thing I loved about it, it was just ridiculous. And it's <laughs> yeah. fun to show up and just be silly, you know, uh, to, especially to a really, you know, an event like that was with, with that caliber of people and that amount of pressure. It's just fun to go do something. Uh, off the cuff. I think to myself, I go, if I had a face like Jared Leto, the last thing I'd do is hide it under a giant cat face. Save the costume for guys like me. But then Jared did the smartest move ever. He walked around with his face out holding the head of the cat. So he got full adorable points and still got to be Jared Leto. I go, God, this guy's living exactly. the life right now. Uh, there's a lot of people that would like to uh, say things to you, uh, ask you questions, a variety of things. New music. You know, you dropped this song on us on Monday. It was an unexpected treat for us. We didn't know it was going to happen. Uh, and then we're going to listen to it in a moment. It's called Stuck. This is something that came out of COVID. This is your COVID project. But what is Stuck about before we listen to it on K-Rock? You know, Stuck is, is, is really a song about being in a certain place in your life, uh, uh, you know, caught in a, a cycle, caught in a place that maybe you want to break out of. Uh, and it's also about, um, there's a sense of liberation there, a sense of celebration, a sense of freedom. Um, and I think when you watch the music video, you get, you, you get, that feeling you know you understand a little bit more about the song we shot for two days in paris uh and and, and you directed it right yeah i directed it as well and um and that just came out two days ago as well so let's listen to it now on k-rock it's going to be on the uh, sixth studio album it's the end of the world but it's a beautiful day a little pessimism but then optimism on top it's kind of like your outlook on life that is really kind of my mantra like it is the, the world is ending but today's a sweet day let's uh, enjoy this this is stuck we world premiered it earlier this week on k-rock jared leto is here anything else you'd like to say you want to dj talk it up for these eight seconds <laughs> this is jared leto and our brand new song stuck it's better than we are. It is new, 30 Seconds to Mars. Jared Leto is with us in studio celebrating the release of the song. Dropped on us earlier this week. There will be an album as well. First uh, in five, uh, first new song in five years. Album, I think it's going to be closer to six, I believe, right? Yeah. So that is going to be out soon. It's called It's the End of the World, but it's a beautiful day. And the cool thing about it is there will not be one song on there, even though he wrote hundreds. 
There's not one song longer than, what, three and a half minutes? Well, yeah, with this album, we've gone, you know, back in the day, we had 10-minute songs. But I think my brother and I really wanted to focus on the core of the song and, and, and you know, do something really focused. Uh um, very succinct, and that's well, what we did. We were just talking during the break about how you're an emotional wreck right now. How you get really nervous when an album or a song is being released, just because you're so you yeah. know you you worked so hard on this, and it's a very vulnerable moment to see you know everyone hearing it for the first time when you've been working on it for so long. Yeah, if there is a good therapist out there, <laughs> you, can, you can DM me. There's plenty of therapists that call our show on a regular basis. You know what it is? It's it's a beautiful thing, right? To put it out there and to share it with the world, but it's also it's not yours anymore. Um, you're, you're not working on it. You can't change things. You don't. You can't uh, adjust anything. You have to let it go. So that's part of it. The letting go. Uh, the other part, like I was saying, is you work on a song for three years and you play it for someone. It's over in three minutes. Yeah. Uh, and then that's it. You 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 either connect with somebody or you don't. So I always find that the harder you work on something, uh, the greater attachment you have to the outcome of that specific thing whether it's a relationship or a song or, a, you know, whatever. Um, so in, in this case, we're at that point right now, both with the music video, which almost killed me, uh, and the song where, yeah, where I'm, I'm, I would say I'm, I'm on the edge. Do yeah. you do all your own stunts in the music video? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> like the Tom Cruise of music videos? That's I like right. that. That's hey, uh, we've promised some listeners and fans of yours they could have 30 seconds with Jared Leto as he's here to celebrate new 30 seconds to Mars. Topics, whatever you want. Uh, Jake, you're on with Jared Leto. Go ahead. 30 seconds, then we cut you off. What do you want to say? Fair enough. Uh, I got a, a film question followed by, uh, by a music one. Uh, you're hey, half, you're almost out of time. <laughs> 30 Perfect. seconds. Already. Hey, man, uh, how much weight are you going to lose or gain for the next role? You know, I'm actually going to gain some some muscle, my friend, um, uh, for the next role and, and get in shape. I'm a bit of a skinny old man right now, uh, so I'm going to gain a little bit. Is the most fun job when they tell you, because this is the only thing I think would be fun about being, like when they say to you, you have to put on 300 pounds for a role and you get to eat ice cream all day? You know what's terrible about that, which I have done before I gained 67 pounds for a movie once? Um, I did that on a weekend once. Yeah. <laughs> the, the problem is, after that first meal... You're stuffed, right. and you're stuffed for the next six months. And you have to keep eating. And then your, your taste buds don't yeah. work anymore. Oh. That cookie, that donut, because you're doing so much. You don't appreciate yeah, the sweets appreciate because it. you're just yeah. eating it all the time. Yeah, yeah. And then I remember to lose the weight. I went on tour, which is a great diet. The right. Tour <laughs> diet, yeah. Constantly moving heavy equipment yeah. Sugar packets. Yeah. Alexa, 30 seconds with Jared Leto. Go ahead. You're on K-Rock. What do you got? Hi, Jared. I'm Alexa. I'm going to a wedding next week, um, my cousin's wedding, and I want to... Impress? Where can I get a, a cat costume? Oh, geez, um, what a question! <laughs> uh, Yours was custom made. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you could you could borrow mine, I suppose. It might be a little dirty uh, <laughs> by now. I think half of New York has put that thing on. Uh, certainly, it's it's crazy to think we gone from COVID to six thousand people right. trying on that yeah. cat. Yeah. 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 Uh, exactly. Yeah, the world is How far now. we've come. Yeah. Uh, like you say, it's uh, the, the the end of the world, but it's a beautiful day. You right? gotta right. give her the cat costume, and then she has to sit in the front row and block everybody's view. Timothy, thirty seconds with the great Jared Leto. Go ahead. Like the new song is awesome. Freshen is does pineapple belong on pizza? Hmm. You know, I have to say absolutely, my friend. And not only pineapple, but jalapeno. I agree. Ooh, Together. I yeah. love it. I mean, Sweet always with spice. jalapeno, you got to be careful. It's a power couple right there. We know uh, this. Uh, Philippe, we give you the final question. Jared Leto's a busy man. He's got to promote this album all over the place. The new song is out. And, of course, it's not easy being, uh, you know, so talented. I, I wouldn't know, but I could imagine. Uh, Phil, uh, Philippe, your question. 30 seconds. Yeah, Jared, thank you for your work, your, your acting and whatnot. My only question is, do you take mushrooms? And if so, what kind? <laughs> you know, the kind that we used to take as a kid, my brother and I, were the only kind that came around uh, uh, because when I was a kid, you know, mushrooms were a bit of an exotic thing. Like they would appear mm -hmm. uh, and your dealer would, would have them all of a sudden. Uh, you'd eat a bunch, try not to throw up, and then yeah. have... Uh, I, went, I went and watched... Um, God, like, you know, Lampoon's Vacation or something like that. Or on, Fletch. On Mushrooms. I watched Fletch. <laughs> you ever, remember Fletch? I'm yes. with my brother. You watched yeah. that on and Mushrooms? And we, we noticed at one point that we were laughing at all the parts no one else was. <laughs> <laughs> and like really loudly. Yeah. And then we were like, whoa, we got like a little paranoid. 
<laughs> That's the good stuff. They were unsanctioned. You yeah. just found them in a pile of cow but turds. Back in the day, you, it wasn't so available. You right. Know, you took, you had to buy this, like all they all he had was brown weed. Right. So you just kind of yeah. took it. That's what it is. all the seeds out. Oh, yeah. That's when you earned it, though. You feel yeah. like you really earned it. You yeah. really did. Uh, all right, Christina, we'll let you have the final word. Uh, 30 seconds, Jared Little, quickly. Hey, Jerry, I just wanted to say I love you, man, and good work on all your albums, and the song is awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, and uh, we hope to see you on stage very soon. Of course, we're going to be back on the road. Um, the album comes out in September, by the way, and yeah. it is called It's the End of the World, but it's a beautiful day. Um, so we'll hope to see you soon. Thank you for coming to hang out with us at K Rock. The great Jared Leto. It's Thank always you, you're always welcome here. Enjoy on the road, Lollapalooza this year, a bunch of other festivals as well. Yeah. And uh, we will see you hopefully back here at K Rock uh, soon. And if you want to, you know, send us that cat costume. Allie's got two of her own, so right. I have two actual cats. Oh, actual yes. cats. But right. I think they would probably like me more if I was yeah. dressed like. Yeah, you may catch something. So. All right, that's good. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> the best thing. Uh, hey, good seeing you again. Take care. Bye.